Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to this week's segment of Live Without Limits. Today we're talking about igniting the laws of attraction. What are the laws of attraction? It's the energy that you put out into the universe that's either positive or negative. And when it's negative, it brings back to you those negative things that you think about. Every single second is an opportunity to change your life and become. In any moment, you can change the way you feel, said Rhonda Byrne. You create your own universe as you go along, said Winston Churchill. It is the combination of thought and love which forms the irresistible force of the law of attraction, said Charles Hamill. See the things that you want as already yours. Know that they will come to you in need. That then let them come. Don't feel and worry about them. Don't think about your lack of them. Think of them as yours. It's belonging to you. It's already in your possession said Robert Collier. The practice of giving things is is commemorated today by America as a national holiday. If you want to live, the law of attraction, appreciation, shouldn't be confined to a solitary, solitary day. It should incorporate all your daily living. On a daily basis, you should appreciate everything that you have. Why? Because for certain reasons, your thoughts attract to you those things you believe in. And often, I know that this shouldn't be the the things that I think about, but I also realize why I do it. Because... In my family, there was always a negative vibe that went on and always a treatment of being belittled and and very negative. And even though I try to think very positively, I have to deal with the fact that my sister controls my money and my inheritance as the executor of, of the trust. And instead of respecting me and getting me what I need when I need it, she does it on her own time. For instance, I had to re- I have to replace my compression stockings every six months because they get stretched out. We purchased them instead of her sending them to me. Guess where they're sitting in her home, and. First she was coming in June, and then for a lot of, and that would have been okay, but she never came. And here it is, July, and I need them. And she has no idea when she's coming, and she won't even send them to me because in her mind, they're not that important because they don't affect her. And yes, it makes me angry about it. And I also realized that all the things she's doing is going to fall back on her head someday for being abusive and being so negative, but it, it, I can't stop myself from being angry over the fact that she disrespects me so much, and yet she can't see it. So as you see, there are times when even though you understand the laws of attraction and you want to be positive, yes, those, those negative thoughts are going to seep in simply because there are things happening 
that are out of your control and you get angry about it. So appreciation is the oxygen that breathes life into the three-step law of attraction process. It turns the spark of your desire into a full-blown flame at, that effortlessly attracts the things that you like months to a candle. Okay, let me let me re-say that because I'm not saying it right. So it turns the spark of your desire into a full-blown flame that effortlessly attracts the things that you want like moss to a candle. Three steps to attract what you want. The first step of the law of attraction is quick and easy. Ask. As soon as you become aware of the desire, announce it to the universe. State your intention out loud. Write it down. Post a picture of what you want on your vision board or simply think, I want that. The next step is to believe. So think about it. You ask, you believe. And the last thing you do, and let's get back to this. The last thing that happens is that you receive. So, okay. First thing you do is you ask for what you want. The next step is to believe. Believe that you can have the thing that you want. And then release your desire to do to the universe. Trust that you'll receive what you want or something better. Either way, the decision is in the universe's hands. Detachment from the outcome occurs when you have total faith that the universe will give you exactly what is perfect for you at the right time, at the right here and now. Affirmations are used to remove doubt about whether you'll get or you deserve what you want. An affirmation describes your goal as already complete. It affirms what you want versus what you don't want. It also captures how you feel when celebrating your goal. This allows you to feel the actual feeling that you experience upon achieving your goal. For example, I am feeling light and alive in my perfect body weight of one 35. Appreciation works its magic during the final step you receive. Appreciation is one of the highest emotional states you can be in. It is the state of abundance. The law of retraction states that like attracts like. If you are grateful for what you have already received, you will attract more for which you can be grateful for. And think of a moment that your own experience with a holiday gift giving when relatives show sincere pleasure and appreciation for the gifts you give, no matter how simple you want to shower them with even more. Gifts giving becomes a delight for you as much as for the recipients. Contrast this with people who don't acknowledge your presence or who dismiss them as not big enough, impressive enough, or right enough. Giving gifts to these individuals becomes an obligation. You don't spend hours searching for the perfect gift. You settle for the items that are adequate. The universe operates in a similar way. It's Best gifts go to the individuals who vibrate at the highest levels of appreciation for the gifts they've already received to create the vibrational match with what you want. Live the feeling, space of 
already processing the things you want. Appreciate what you already have. And you'll be vibrating in the same state of gratitude. You'll be in, in when the universe delivers what you want. So, we've been talking about how to ask, believe, and you will receive. You know what? These are actually the same things that religion talks about. And why is that? Because religion says you ask God or you ask Jesus. And Jesus will give it to you if you truly believe. So, think about those three things again. Ask. When you ask a question, when you ask the universe to give you what you want, and you believe that you will get what you want, and then you will receive what you want. Those three things are the things that you should always think of as being there to appreciate your goals in your life and appreciate. And you know what? And using affirmations, why is an affirmation important? Because an affirmation teaches you how to retrain your thinking from that of being one of negative to that of one of being very positive, of really believing in who you are as an individual and trying not to let others control you. For instance, my sister is really just doing exactly the same things that my mother did. And why? Because when she did it as a child, she got away with it. And even though my mother's no longer here, she still feels she can get away with it. But you know what? The day will come when it will all fall back on her head. Because my mother lived to be 92, but the last few years of her life, and she was someone who was miserable most of her life, she literally ended up with macular degeneration, started losing her eyesight. As a young child, she lost hearing in one ear because she fell off the teeter-totter and then slowly started losing hearing in the other ear. And then finally, the last year of her life, she was pretty much in a wheelchair independent. And let me tell you something, as good as my sister wants to tell everyone she was to her mother, she was taking out a lot of stuff on her. Because you know what? My mother, having been in a wheelchair and being to the point where she could not stand up on her legs to take a bath or get into a tub, and it would have been easy to just wheel her into the, the, big, the shower, guess what they did? They would pick her up and put her in the tub to wash herself. And my mother wasn't smart enough to say, we need to do it the easy way. She let them continue, and that was really abuse whether they believe it or not, because you were taking too much out of her and you were making it harder on yourselves in caring for her at the same time. So guess what? Those things are going to happen to my sister because she's already having to wear hearing aids because she's losing hearing in a, in her, losing hearing plus She's, start, she's at an age where she's starting to have some health problems and doesn't even realize it. But you know what? She thinks that because she's the youngest, she's going to live the longest, and she's going to find she could end up being the first one to go because it's the, the kind of the way you treat the people around you that gives you what you truly want in life. Appreciate the smallest blessings. Activate your gratitude by acknowledging 
the gifts most people take for granted. If you had food in your refrigerator, meaning that you have electricity, clothes on your closet, and a roof over your head, you are better off than 75% of the world's population. If you eat three meals a day, you are far better off than one billion people on the planet who eat once a day at most. Celebrate these simple blessings. Do you have a phone? Be grateful. Millions don't. How about a car that allows you to travel to work or to explore the country? Is your family healthy? Do you have a computer or internet access to stay in touch with the world? Get access to education and perform work for which you are paid. Do you have clean water to drink? These daily conveniences are gifts that most people in the world do not enjoy. This is something that we don't always think about when we live in an affluent country. And we have a president today that literally thinks that because he's a businessman and he was successful, but the thing is, his success came at the advantage of taking and using other people. You know what? It may not fall back on his head, but it will fall back on his children's head. The thing is that he's pulled stunts and he's done things that he's had people cover up for him. And now he's at a point where his, that his people that have been covering up for him are literally going to tell his secrets to keep their asses out of jail because they feel like, why should they go to jail to protect him when he doesn't appreciate it? Daily appreciation habits. Here are five easy ways to make appreciation part of your daily routine. Take seven minutes each morning to write down all you appreciate. Starting your day this way primes you to be receptive and grateful for everything that your day will bring. Carry a physical token of gratitude in your pocket, such as a stone, crystal, or other small item. As you reach into your pocket throughout the day and feel the token, use it to as a reminder to stop, breathe. Okay. Let's go back and say this again. Carry a physical token of gratitude in your pocket, such as a stone, crystal, or some other small item. As you reach into your pocket throughout the day and feel the token, use it as a reminder to stop, breathe, and take a moment to fully experience the emotion of gratitude. This is the one thing that few people do. They, have, they don't have gratitude for what they have. I'm going to give you a good example of this. I come from a very dysfunctional family. I have an older sister who was born deaf and really had no concept of what was going around her except for what her family told her. And my mother was very negative, and she passed on those negative feelings to her to the point that as a child, she would constantly physically abuse herself because that was the only way that she learned that she got the attention from her parents that she so craved. And why did she have to do that? Because they were not loving parents. They had no understanding of how to hug a child and tell a child that they loved them. They had no concept of what the word love truly meant. 
their marriage was not even one built on respect. It was based on mutual need. That for my mother, she had fin- she desperately wanted financial security, and she got it with my father because he was a lawyer who made a decent income. And they could live the lifestyle that they wanted to live. But she was very negative. And the thing is that my father did not physically abuse my mother, but he definitely physically abused his children because in the home he came from, there was a lot of abuse. Today, if, and I can remember being a 12-year-old child sent to school crying and upset. And I remember a, a, a classmate saying to me, who hit you? I'll go beat him up for you. And I said, my father. At that point in time, this, it was looked at as discipline. Today, if that same incident would have been reported, a social worker would have been in the home to find out what it was that I had done so terribly. And simply, it was nothing more than me exerting some spirit and trying to do something for myself instead of being dependent on them to do something for me. And that's all it really was. And because I was being abused and hit just for something as simple as that, yes, it made me angry and it made me want to do things to cry out for help. But you know what? The timing was very different because nothing was done. Appreciate at least three people every day. Most people enjoy receiving verbal appreciation but by written notes, but also nice because they can be saved and reread. And this is literally what I am talking about, that if you appreciate, if you, if you respect someone for who they are, and you try to learn about them and don't prejudge them, but learn about them and understand why they do what they do, then you will have a better relationship with them than you would have ordinarily. Play the appreciation game. As the saying goes, every cloud has a silver lining Look for the good in all situations. When my wife, or rather, let's put it this way. When my father was in a car accident a few years ago, he could have chosen to berate himself or question his judgment. Instead, he focused on his gratitude for suffering only minor injuries and for the help he received from other drivers. Appreciate yourself for all you need. Acknowledge it. But the most important acknowledgement is what we give ourselves. In addition to celebrating your big successes, acknowledge small daily successes too. During my annual Breakthrough to Success training, I assign the mirror exercise as homework because your subconscious mind needs positive encouragement to pursue further achievements and to change <laughs> any negative beliefs you hold towards praise and accomplishment. This powerful exercise requires you to appreciate yourself in the day's accomplishments while talking to yourself in a mirror. And let me tell you something about how the mirror exercise came about. In transactional analysis, which talks about interaction between your adult, your parent, and your child, that actually, it, it actually all of these things play together, but in psychodrama, they, they use 
mirroring where someone else will mirror your expression, mirror what it is, and, and verbalize what you're feeling so that what you have to do is turn around and either say what they said or say, no, that's not what I'm feeling. This is what I'm fearing. But mirroring in this concept means for you to look in the mirror and be very observant of who you are and what it is that you believe in. Why? Because so many times we don't realize just how we as individuals are basically sending double messages. Because the words you say and the expressions on your face and the way you move can be totally different because we don't realize when you're talking to someone, your hands be, can be crossed like you're challenging them. So that what you're saying and what your body is saying is two different things. So the idea here is to be aware of your body and your movement. And one of the things that I can tell you is watch a very talented actor because they can say more with their body they can, than they can say with words because they can convey a feeling or emotion that they're not expressing with words. And this is something that not all people even think about. Appreciation is not human nature. Many people find that it requires great diligence to cultivate an attitude of appreciation. We are culturally conditioned to focus on what we don't have rather than appreciate what we already receive. Decades ago, the University of Chicago conducted a fascinating study into appreciation. Researchers took soldiers who had recently returned from the World War II Pacific Theater and housed them in the Quonset huts on campus. At first, the men were delighted with their housing because they were ecstatic to be off the battlefield. After about 30 days, however, they started to complain about the Quonset huts rather than being grateful for a simple yet safe place to live. They began to focus on what they didn't have. They became dissatisfied with not having more comfortable quarters. It may not feel natural at first to focus on appreciating what you already have, but by faithfully using the appreciation exercise outlined, you will change your conditioning. Giving things will become more than an occasional exercise. It will become a daily discipline that allows you to vibrate in more of what you want in life. And you find this very true in life on so many levels that we appreciate what we don't have when we first get it, but then along the way we forget about that appreciation and we look for someone or something because we want more. It's just human nature to want more than what you have and not appreciate what you do have. And remember, you can go to my website, and that website is the number one, personalcareercoach.com, and you can sign up for both individual and group coaching. And I am certified as a coach to work with people, to help them understand how to use the laws of attraction in their life. 